on the 17 inch one, but you know, for small pies. Um, this one just has uh, mineral oil and uh, beeswax on it. And the other ones up here are what they call a traditional style rolling pit. Um, it has ball bearings in the end and a shaft through the center of it and the it spins on the ball bearings. I have four of them up here in, in different states of uh, turnings. Um, this one is just the block of a Celtic knot, double Celtic knot design. Anybody wants to learn how to do that? We can do a demo on that some night. Takes four days to make this though, so be patient. Doesn't take long, but you gotta let glue dry. Um, then I turn it into that, and then from here it goes into drilling the ends for the bearings and a hole all the way through the center of it for the shaft. And at that point, you put the bearings in it. And the bearings and the shaft I get at uh, Fastenal. Uh, I have them up here if anybody's interested. The part numbers are on the sides of the box. Yes, Roger? The bearings pressed into the glue in. They're just pressed in. And the shaft glued onto the handle? Yes. Boxy. Yeah. Um, the handle are glued onto the shaft and in between the handle and the rolling pin, if you look at this one, there's a little plastic washer um, that I stick in between there just to keep keep them from running all the way up against the, the edge. But yeah, they're epoxy on to the shaft. Um, after I put the bearings in, I will nick up the ends of the shaft so the epoxy sticks to it and then just use the five minute quick set epoxy, put a little on it, shove them on there. Is it a through hole? Solid shaft or is it a two-sided shaft? One wall shaft. How do you get around Um I have a homemade steady rust. Um, you clamp onto it with a chuck on this end of it and run a forester bit in so far for the bearing. And then from there, you run, a, I use a six inch or seven inch, half inch uh, drill bit and drill so far in on both ends. And then I got a long drill bit that's about 18 inches that I shove in that you got to cut about two inches out of the center of it. Yeah. Have you ever thought about when you glue it up to leave the center part open and just close up the ends so that you only can drill the very ends? I start out with a three foot or three inch by three inch block. So you could have a you could put a hole in before you glue it up like that. You'd still would have to drill a hole all the way through. And you can make a glue up so you left that sound. You, you can't do a Celtic with, knot with a. You start out with a solid piece. Yeah, you can't do a Celtic knot uh, segmented piece. Because the, the, the pieces that you inlay into it go completely through from one end to the other end. You can't, you can't glue up a. a you could, I guess you could glue up a rolling pin in segmented, but it'd be pretty tough. You know, I guess you could if you did it in state form or something like that. But I just use a solid block. Okay, so we're going to do pretty much a first style rolling pin. Um, I said that a couple of people I talked to that are pastry chefs at um, the Blue Owl, they like it to be 7 to 10 inches flat in the center and then taper down. Um, some of the books that you read, they say taper from center down, but the problem is, as they say, is you can your dough is never flat. It's always thicker in some spots, and if you're trying to do 
pies and stuff like that, you pretty much want a flat, flat, even pie crust. So that's the reason why I did it the way I did. Um, I know somebody's going to ask me what speed I turn at. Pretty much as fast as I can. Um, and as fast as the lathe will go without walking. Blanks for two small pieces of maple, and what I have in the center is a piece of walnut. And what I did was drill a three eighth, or three quarter inch, use a three quarter inch portion of it, drilled about an inch and a half down on both sides of it, and drilled a three quarter inch hole through my piece of uh, walnut, and then just used a three quarter inch dowel and glued it back together again so it's doweled. Um, makes it sturdy so it won't flex on it. Almost got around. Let's speed it up for now.
Now the diameter of the front feather depends about three quarter or inch and three quarters inch diameter on its biggest point. Um, and on that one I have it tapered down to about an inch and a quarter at the ends. Now my traditional style rolling pins, those are about two and a half inches in diameter. Um, I start out with a three inch by three inch block, but by the time you get uh, your Celtic knot design cut in it, you don't cut all the way through when you're doing the inlay part of it, so uh, you leave about a quarter inch, so you have a quarter inch on each, uh, on each side that you're getting rid of. So uh, it ends up being about two and a half inches in diameter. here. Uh, 1.78, 1.81 on that end, so I'm a little bit high on this end still, but right at about where I want to be. Um, this one we're going to go ahead and just do uh, let's go ahead and do nine inches of flat and then I'll taper from here down it'll be a shorter taper <laughs> Point seven nine, one point seven seven, one point seven nine, one point seven nine. So we're it's pretty much flat across here. We'll do a little sanding on it, but close enough to for pie crust and cookies. Anybody says your cookie's a hundred thousandth of an inch, you know, thicker on one side than the other, you just don't give them cookies anymore. <laughs> okay. 
I'm going to go ahead and mark my how far I'm going to go down. Just make sure that your calipers and the points on them are rounded. Um, usually you won't get a catch then. Well, they'll be rounded if you do it enough. Yeah, well, that's true too. Um, so now I got my ends here. So now I just got to taper down from here down to the to that point on both sides. And for these, I usually just use my roughing gouge for the whole thing. I do better from left to right than I do right to left, so. when you're using them if uh, 
If they're a little bit rough, uh, the flour will stick to it. If you get them too smooth and the finish you put on them is, is too slick, the flour won't stick to it. And it, you have problems with the dough sticking to your, to your rolling pin. So um, that was one of the things that uh, one of the bakers said is they, they've tried them with uh, the plastic ones and they're too smooth. They just won't hold, they won't hold the flour so you can't flour the rolling pin. So what do you put on for that? Um, what I'm trying to use right now, and what I have on that French rolling pin right now, is just mineral oil. Uh, it's mineral oil and uh, beeswax. Um, you can use, uh, really on a rolling pin, you don't even have to put any finish on them at all. The last thing I've been doing, I've only been finishing sanding uh, them to like 180 to 220. And that's basically the French style rolling pin. Uh, I'll smooth down the ends on it if it was, like I said, usually uh, they're usually about 20, 20, 22 to 20 inches long. This one's only like 17 inches, so it's a uh, small one, but I uh, put it here, it's kind of tight to get, get to it, but I, yeah, I would round up both edges just a little bit. And that's all there is to it. Cool. What's the challenge for next month? Next month's challenge will either be a French style rolling pin or a traditional, whichever one you prefer. Or you can do just a regular pin, rolling pin, which is just a cylinder. And no, you can't go buy a dowel rod, Roger, and just throw that up there. You can't go to Home Depot and buy the two-inch dowel rod and say, I, I made a rolling pin. <laughs> yes? Are you going to tell us a little bit about the setup on the assembly? Yeah. On the first style rolling pin? Or on the traditional ones I do? Yeah. What would you like to let know? Uh, the cuts, the angles. On my cuts, I have no precise angle. I. I have a jig that I made for my table saw and what I did was sit there with the block and draw an X on it. Um, some people say do it at a 45 degree angle but the problem is with that then you have a small Celtic knot in the center and you got a lot of empty space over here. So what I did was I said okay I want my rolling pin to be uh, 14 inches and I kind of laid it out and just said, okay, I kind of like that design. You know, I want it that, that big. I can't tell you exactly what that angle is. I, you know, you can come up here and measure it if you want. Um, so what I did is I made a sled that fits on my table saw and it sets like this on there. And what it does is it cuts right down through it and you come up here and look at it. I, I'm cutting all the way through except for about an eighth of an inch. That's as high as my, my blade will go through the thing. And then I got a spacer block that I, I stick in there that pushes the, the block up so it cuts the, the other groove. And what I can do is when I have both glue, glue, grooves cut, I can set this on my work table and clamp it here and then I can push this open to get the grooves to open up a little bit and then I slide the two pieces down in it. When you're doing a Celtic knot design, the two things that everybody makes a mistake about is they cut the piece completely in half 
and then they try to glue a piece wider or smaller than the piece of wood that they took out of it, and that's why they never line back up again. So on a Celtic knot design, you don't cut all the way through it, and the piece that you've got to slide back in has to be exactly the same thickness as your saw blade. And the only reason you don't have to cut through it is you're going to take off that piece that didn't go all the way through anyway. Correct, yes. I mean, that's why I start out with a 3-inch blank, and it ends up being 2 1⁄2 inches in diameter at the end is because I'm losing a quarter here and a quarter here. That makes up my half inch. You know, if you measure it, it's probably a little less than a quarter, but once I get to get it completely round and smooth and everything else, it ends up being right at 2 1⁄2 inches in diameter. And if you come up and somebody was calipering these earlier, they're within pretty much 2-5-1 to 2-5-0 all the way across the rolling pin. And like I said, it's a hundred thousandths of an inch, you know, across 14 inches. If somebody says my cookie's a little thicker on one end or the other end, they just don't get no more cookies from me. Do you trim your ends with your table saw to get rid of the dimples? On this one right here, I did. Um, this one right here, I did it. Uh, actually, I did it last night. Um, I drilled this one and everything last night. Um, and once I had it drilled, I put it on my sled on my, I got a cross cut sled on my uh, table saw and just went, went through and cut the, the, uh, the edges right off of it with my table saw. And that, either end of this has not been sanded or touched. It came right off the blade like that. And you can come up and take a look. That's how smooth my saw blade cuts. It's an expensive saw blade, but I don't have to do any sanding with it. I mean, it's one of the uh, red fraud, Freud. Um, you can get them up at Rock or you can get them over at the wood, wood show, but they cost about 75 bucks for the saw blade. But I've had two of them for the last seven years now, and I've cut a mile of oak on them. And uh, the, the, the cuts I got on when I do the segmented work, I don't have to sand or anything. I mean, they're, they're smooth. Spend the money on the saw blades. I use, and a couple of guys have come up to my shop, or my garage, so-called shop. It's a two-car garage that two cars go in every night, so I move everything out. I have a, just a little contractor, flip up table saw. Uh, everybody says, oh, to do segmented work, you got to have a cabinet grade, you know, saw you can't do. I have a little fold up craftsman table saw and a $70 saw blade on it. Mm. That's, that's what I get with it. Um, I haven't the, when I bought, bought my first flawed, they didn't come out with thin kerf yet. And the, the problem with me going to a thin kerf now, I have to redo all my jigs. <laughs> so, yeah, eventually I'll probably go to a thin kerf blade, but uh, that just means I, all, my, all my jigs have to be redone. So, right now I'm just sticking with the full thickness blades. But um, my, my saw would probably work a lot better if I used a thin kerf than a full full curve blade, but that's what I got, so that's what I'm, um, and like I said, it doesn't look bad with the, the Celtic knot at the, the full eighth inch thick, but if you went uh, thin curve, it would probably look a little bit better. Um, everybody thinks, that, you know, why is it so thick at the ends? It's just an optical illusion. If you look at it this way, the, the piece is the same thickness all the way across. It's just that you're cutting it more at an angle at that side. Any other questions, Bob, on It's the same thickness as as the it's an eighth inch thick. Yeah. My pieces are, my pieces I put in there are an eighth inch thick, and the the space in between it's an eighth inch thick. It's probably the angle on it, but the the piece that I'm 
my shim piece that I'm putting in there is only an eighth inch thick. The eighth inch piece, Keith, you might, you're down, you're down to right on the money, an eighth inch. Um, well, I, what I do is I cut a piece, I run a piece through my saw blade, or through my saw, and then I surface plane that piece down to where it just fits in that, in that saw blade. So I, they, they say uh, the, the saw blade is cutting, a, is an eighth inch thick, so I, that's what I'm taking it as, but what I do is I, I take a two, a two by four, and I'll, I'll stand it on its end, and run it through there and cut a curve, uh, cut a slot in it, and then I, I surface plane my pieces down to where it just fits in that two by four fine, and then I know it will fit in the maple stock fine. I wish I had a, a, a drum sander that I could run it through, but I don't. All I have is a surface planer, so it's you know I get it down to an eighth inch thick. Um, but the the bearings and the shafts I get out of at, at Fastenal. Um, I just bought a six foot piece of stainless steel, and you want to make sure you use stainless steel rod because if you just use cold rolled steel, it will rust on you. Um, another thing, if you make these, tell the people don't soak them in water. They can't run them through the dishwasher or they're going to have a whole bunch of little pieces in the bottom of their dishwasher afterward because it's just held together with wood glue. Um, that rolling pin there, we use it all the time. All we do is wipe it down with uh, a damp rag. Um, but uh, that's how I do the traditional, uh, they call it the tra tra traditional uh, American style rolling pin. Yes, they have it. Uh, I bought a six foot section of stainless steel, non-polished. If you get the polished stainless steel, you're, it's about three times, three times the price. They get, uh, you can get non-polished stainless steel rod, and I bought six foot of that and eight bearings, and it cost me right at 34 bucks. And I can get three pieces three shafts out of that six foot piece. So is that five sixteenths? No, it's three eighths. And the bearings are seven eighths outside, three eighths inside diameter. The bearings are like a buck and a half a piece. Uh, the stainless steel rods, uh, like I said, out of a six foot long, I can get three pieces and then I have like a foot left over. You could probably get it, but I leave three inches on each side for the handles to go on. You could get it down to, if you got it down to two inches, you could get four four pieces out of it. But I'm always afraid of, you know, just two inches shoved onto the handles. They may want to break off or something like that. So, yeah, you can come up and take a look at it. It's just a, I get them up at Home Depot or Lowe's. And they're just uh, seven eighths inch outside, three eighths inch inside little plastic uh, washers that they have in their little packages up there. And I will, I do that because when I go to put epoxy on the shaft and epoxy the handle on, if I get any squeeze out, it'll go onto the washer. It won't go onto your bearing and seize your bearing up. But uh, any other questions on the rolling pins? It, like I said, I haven't had any problems yet. I mean, we use that one on a, you know, fairly regular basis. But I haven't had any problems with it yet. Um, we had one before that that we bought, you know, 25 years ago when we got married, and it was the same design. I pretty much, you know, looked at it and. It had, it had a plastic washer in it with the bearings in it. And we never had any problems with it. It's just that you just can't soak them in, in water. You, you know, wipe them down and that's about it. Um, like I said, the French style, they're, they're fairly simple. And like I said, both of the ones that are up here, 
I had I didn't have a long piece. I had a couple of short pieces on my in my junk pile. So all I did was chuck them up and drill a three quarter inch because I had a three quarter inch dowel. I just drilled a three quarter inch hole into both of them about two inches deep, and then took that piece of maple or uh, walnut, drilled a three inch three quarter inch hole through that, and they just shoved the dowel in between them and glued it glued it back together again to make a long enough piece. If you were going to use maple, what other woods could you use? Um, there's about three of them that they say are good for rolling pins. Um, maple, cherry, and birch. Birch, yes. Uh, you don't want to use any woods that are have big open cells to them like uh, oak, red oak, because the the food will have a tendency to get stuck in the pores. Um, I guess hickory would probably work as a as a rolling pin too if you could find a piece that you could turn. Um, the harder woods and the, the smaller pored pores uh, of the wood are better for rolling pins because, like I said, if you have oak. And if anybody's ever turned red oak, it's got pretty big open pores on it, and your flour and stuff like that will just get stuck in it. And then you, yeah. What's your inserts? What kind of wood is that? Those are uh, walnut and cherry. Um, I've done them out of, uh, I did one out of bloodwood. And uh, it turned out really nice, but really tough to, to get it. I, I had problems getting it eighth inch because all I could get was one inch stock bloodwood. So I had to plane it down and, and resaw it and stuff like that. And it was a pain in the ass to get it uh, uh, eighth inch thick bloodwood because you can get bloodwood in eighth inch thick, but it's usually only an inch and a half or two inches tall. On those, I need it a little over three inches, um, because what I, when I cut it, I cut them like ten and a half inches long, and they're three inches tall, and then I have a little bit overlap on on the three sides, and then once it dr dries and glues up, I take it and put it on the bandsaw and cut the, the the overlap off of it. But it will take you four days to do. A Celtic knot design if you're using wood glue. You can't rush the drying of the glue. Because if you try, you will be picking glue off the side of your saw blade for hours. I speak from experience on that one. It's not fun picking glue off a $70 saw blade. <laughs> so usually when I do mine, I do them on a big batch. I It takes five minutes to, to cut them. Another 15, 20 minutes to put the put the pieces in, clamp them up, and let them set overnight. And then come back the next day, cut the excess off, cut your slot, and do it again. What do you mean clamp them up? Well, when I, like this one here, once I cut them and glue the two, slot, two pieces in it, I take some clamps and clamp it clamp it together to hold it hold them tight and let them set overnight and then turn them do the same thing again same thing again if anybody wants to see my jig let me know I'll take I'll bring it in next month I had it in here a few months ago um, but if anybody's interested in learning how to do this um, I can I can show you uh, I can get you started, but you're not coming back for four days to learn how to do all four sides. I can get you to do one side, and the rest of it's all up to you. But they're not bad. Any other questions? Thank you.